Good afternoon. As you're aware, Bermuda continues to make strides in the fintech space, both locally and globally. Fintech is transforming the way we do business and has sparked the creation of innovative new technologies that deliver financial services in ways never before imagined. To date, 55 companies have been incorporated in Bermuda, some of which have already started hiring Bermudians. As of January 9, 2019, the Business Development Agency was in discussions with more than two dozen strong prospects for incorporation during 2019, which means that the pipeline for new company formation is strong. Without a doubt, Bermuda has carved out a pioneering and leadership position in this area. This kind of momentum and activity requires the right resources and support. In October, the government announced the creation of the FinTech Business Unit to manage and oversee Bermuda's rapidly expanding FinTech initiatives. And today, I'm very pleased to announce the addition to the FinTech Business Unit. Mr. Dennis Pitcher has been recently appointed as a FinTech Technical Consultant. Mr. Pitcher will work within the FinTech Business Unit, providing high-level technical assistance and advice as it relates to the continued development of Bermuda's fintech sector. Dennis is no stranger to this industry and is eminently qualified to assist the government in continuing efforts to expand and evolve our fintech sector. Mr. Pitcher's vision for Bermuda being a technology center aligns with our overall fintech strategy and he has fit seamlessly into our team. As a bit of background, Dennis Pitcher is the tech co-founder and chief architect of ResQuest.com, a tourism technology solutions provider servicing companies in the North American and Caribbean regions. Prior to becoming a tech entrepreneur, Mr. Pitcher worked as a trading systems developer for Orbis Investment Management and had primary responsibility over the currency trading and hedging recommendation systems. Dennis has had extensive knowledge of fintech-related technologies such as blockchain, distributed ledger technologies, and cryptocurrencies, and has been a local advocate on this subject for a number of years. Mr. Pitcher is a member of the Bermuda Business Development Agency's FinTech Working Group and conducted training sessions on blockchain for the Technology Leadership Forum. He has served as an advisor to various on-island bodies on FinTech and its potential for Bermuda's future, including the Fiscal Responsibility Panel. Mr. Pitcher holds a Bachelor of Engineering Science in Software Engineering from the University of Western Ontario. On behalf of the government, I'm pleased to officially welcome you to our team, and I will invite Mr. Pitcher to say a few words. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you very much, Mr. Premier. I'm very pleased to be given the opportunity to help make a difference for this new industry for Bermuda. I think it holds a lot of promise and a lot of potential for our future. Okay. Thank you. I'm pleased to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, top of the opportunity, you mentioned that some of these 59 companies which have been incorporated here have already begun hiring Bermudians. Can you say which companies and how many Bermudians have been hired also in what capacity? I cannot say which company. I cannot say how many Bermudians have been hired. I know that there have been advertisements that have been placed in the newspaper for one particular company, BitCarbon. I know um, is it Alpha, Innovations? Alpha Innovations. Alpha Innovations have already uh, started hiring as well. Um, I know that there are companies that are, as I said, I've met with, I think, a couple of companies last week, the people who have already uh, moved to the island and set up residence here. So the work is beginning to progress. Specific numbers that I have, I do not have, as we do not track those specific numbers. The only specific the numbers that the government actually tracks are uh, work permits issued. Um, and so from that perspective, we're only looking at new business work permits and fintech work permits. The opposition leader has suggested that we keep hearing a lot of talk about fintech, but nothing mm -hmm. taking place in that perhaps mm -hmm. the government is putting too many eggs in that basket. Mm -hmm. What is your response to that? Uh, the response that I have is that I would say that the opposition leader and others uh, should probably look to be more constructive in looking at areas of growth. And I think that for the persons that are finding opportunities in this area, for the fact that there are 
are local companies, are international businesses that recognize that Bermuda has to play a leading role in fintech because that's where the future will be. I would just ask them to recognize that for any economy, what you must do is not look at what's happening now, but you must also make sure you build and prepare your economy and your citizens for the future. That's what we would like to do, and that is what we will do. And that's the criticism that perhaps you haven't done enough to encourage companies to stay here with the legislation that the, the UK is having, but trying to have forced upon us. Which legislation the, precisely? What is it? Economic substance. The economic substance. Mm -hmm. Um, regarding economic substance, economic substance has not come from the United Kingdom. Economic substance, the basis is in the European Union. Uh, those things have been adopted, those standards have also been adopted by the OECD, and they're a global standard. But I think as the Minister of Finance is very clear inside of his statements that we're not going to telegraph particularly what we're doing to our competing, uh, to competing jurisdictions. We have a strategy that we are working and that we are executing on, and that strategy is very simple, that Bermuda is going to maintain its leadership position that it has. As I go on the road, I am famous for saying that Bermuda um, is one of those countries that has more people than it has companies, and there's a reason why. Bermuda has always been a place of substance. That is the reason why we've been able to be so successful in international business. This is just another change in the way in which we do business, but we have a strategy that we're going to execute, that we're going to deal with the companies that are affected, and it is my intention that Bermuda will be successful from this, and we'll see economic growth that will come from this particular situation. But let us be clear, it is a change to the way in which the world does business, it is going to be a profound change in the way Bermuda does business, but the government has a strategy to ensure that the companies that may be affected are going to be able to find a way to remain within the uh, rules and a way that can actually benefit the Bermuda economy. Mr. Pichet, you've been brought in as a consultant to the uh, FinTech business unit. Have you had a chance to have a look at how that unit is performing? If so, what is your take on it and how do you, your, your consultancy, how do you see that benefiting the, the FinTech business unit? It's still very early days. I'm not completely up to speed yet in what is being done. I'm trying to gain awareness on what the levels of knowledge are. Um, there are a lot of opportunities coming to Bermuda and it's a challenge to figure out how are we going to make sure we make the most of it. So hopefully I'll learn more as I get more time in the position, but of course I have just started. So, any further questions? Um, Scott? Uh, there, are three, there are three people in the FinTech business unit. I believe um, uh, Mr. Wayne Smith was announced uh, publicly as work for FinTech business unit. Dr. Gina Tucker is also coordinating education initiatives uh, there. And the third person to join will be Mr. Dennis Pitcher. Okay. And um, when do we expect to see some licensing under the uh, digital um, that would be up to the Bermuda Monetary Authority. Um, I know that there's been a number of applications which have been filed to Bermuda Monetary Authority uh, for uh, licenses under the Digital Asset Business Act. I'm not entirely certain as the state of uh, those particular applications. As you would know, um, the Bermuda Monetary Authority no longer falls underneath my particular remit. Uh, but in speaking with the team there uh, for applications which are complete, uh, that they are looking uh, at a uh, three-week uh, turnaround time for applications that are complete. Uh, but uh, you, would, you, you must understand that as this being something that is new, there are applications that may have gone in which are not entirely complete, and they're, going, and they're continuing to work with uh, the various people inside of those spaces. But there is a large number of companies that are coming to Bermuda, people um, who are actually looking, who are meeting with the BMA to understand precisely the requirements for get, get these things getting set up, and I'm certain that the BMA will be happy to provide any more detailed information on uh, items that are under the Digital Asset Business Act. Oh, I mean, the, the Digital Asset Business Act is in force. Um, and so from the perspective of uh, the regulations that were done, I think the fees were, there were additional fees that were passed. Those items are in train. Uh, but I think what's most important, the BMA has set up a uh, fintech unit internally that are looking at new technologies, uh, whether they be on the insurance side or the fintech side uh, more broadly. And there are companies that are going through that process. But the Remuda Monitor Authority has a uh, 
uh, spe specific remit to ensure that any company that is going to be operating in our space in a jurist in a industry that is considered high risk uh, meets all the very high standards which we've set. And I am certain that the companies are grateful for the high standards that we have, and we are also grateful that those high standards, and we're certain that those standards will be met because we are looking to attract high quality companies to Bermuda. And I think uh, that we have shown that we've been able to attract high quality companies to Bermuda. When you say incubator for people to be trained up? Yeah, um, you know, because some companies have, have said you know, that they'd be willing to uh, uh, you know, provide some kind of backing for that. Oh, I think you're, okay, I understand what you're talking about right now. Um, what the government right now is doing is working with private sector entities that are looking to engage in similar things. Bermuda is a very small jurisdiction, and the last we want is three or four entities doing the exact same thing. So we're working with those private sector entities. There was a meeting with the FinTech uh, business unit, I believe, that I had last week, talking about the other entities that are looking to do similar things in this space to make sure that we cooperate with them um, in order to ensure that um, we're not doing the same thing, that people who want to get trained inside of this industry have the ability to access training. Um, I know that Dr. Gina Tucker has been working on these things, has been speaking to me, and will be giving an update um, in the near future on what is looked at on the education side. But in addition to that, insofar as companies that want to set up and want to get their cells on the ground and running, we'll work with private sector enterprises that are offering those solutions in the interim before government gets involved. That's it, Scott. Anything else? Um, can I follow up on some of the questions about the EU economic substance? Economic substance, sure. Yeah, okay. You don't have any uh, questions for Dennis? Sorry? No questions for Dennis? Not really. Okay. I mean, no problem. Well, not in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I want to ask you about maybe, I know you can't flesh out what the strategy mm -hmm. might be, um, the reasons why you're giving, but do we have, can you give us some idea of what your working assumptions of that strategy is? in terms of dealing with economic substance requirements. Um, for example, I mean, there might, there, there, there are, to my mind, going to be some companies that will have to leave the career. Do we have a sense of, is that a working assumption, and do we have a sense of how many, you think, or what proportion might leave? Um, here's what I would say, and the Minister of Finance is running points on this. I have, of course, spoken with him at length on this particular situation, especially that I was running through most of uh, this during the period in time that I served um, in that position as well. Um, the running assumption is not that many companies will move. The running assumption is that you have to remember this is a global standard. It is not a standard that is just applicable to Bermuda. It is applicable to Bermuda. It is applicable to the other overseas territories. It's applicable to uh, Crown dependencies. It's applicable to Gulf states. It's applicable all around the world. So this is not something that is unique to Bermuda. What we are now in a period where lots of jurisdictions have written uh, their regulations, we now have to wait for the European Union to finalize their assessment. Once the assessments have been finalized, we will then move forward with uh, what we are going to make sure that we're going to do to keep these companies here. As I said, there may be some that are going to leave. There may be some that choose to remain. But the fact is, if they leave, it's not as though if they're going to go to a different jurisdiction where these rules do not apply. These rules apply everywhere, and that's why we believe it is important for Bermuda not only to maintain its excellent reputation and to do all the work of which we've done, such as when it makes sure that we have an excellent anti money laundering assessment, making sure the BMA is in tip-top shape and is efficient and responsive to queries, making sure that our registrar of companies is able to respond efficiently uh, to any challenges which may happen. But once those things are done, and once we have an idea of the specific requirements from the European Union, we can then talk to companies on a case-by-case -case basis, talk to their legal representatives on a case-by-case -case basis and lay that out. But here's the thing that I'll say. We know what the big companies are, and the government has already started to reach out to some of those companies. We already have certain meetings that have been confirmed with those companies, and we're going to continue to work that strategy because that strategy is important. What we want is in this changing dynamic for there to be more jobs in Bermuda. That is the overall objective of this government, to create more jobs in Bermuda, to reduce the cost of living in Bermuda. And so from the perspective where we can have additional jobs created in Bermuda that will benefit the Bermuda economy, that's where the government is focused on. And we're looking at the companies that can be best able to deliver on that objective. Gotcha. Um, and on, I think, somewhat related topic, the um, privacy office. 
Mm-hmm. We don't have a commission here. When mm-hmm. we, why the delay? And when I don't believe that there is a specific delay on the appointment of a privacy commissioner. I know that the advertisement was uh, filed, um, and I know that people did apply and people were interviewed. I'm not certain as to the delay on the appointment that relies with the governor of uh, which that his, the appointment lies with the governor. Uh, but on our and my weekly audience on Wednesday, I can follow up on that question for you. But end of last year was supposed to be the deadline to implement mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. I would say that it, you may be correct in that. I don't have any up-to-date knowledge. I know that the government internally has been working through the policy and strategy section to make sure that internal government departments are aware of what they have to do in order to be able to comply with this. And I know that um, that the search had gone out for a privacy commissioner, and I know that uh, persons um, had applied and were interviewed for such. And as I said, I can get a specific update as to uh, when there's an appointment that's to be sought. Okay. Any plans to grow the FinTech unit from the Mm-hmm. Um, at this point in time, not really. Um, I think from the perspective of where the government stands, the government has a, um, has a, I would say, we have a limited amount of financial resources in which to do what it is we want to do. From this perspective right now, we think it, it is good, but there may be future announcements in the near future where we're talking about amalgamating certain uh, departments uh, to make sure that we can focus on not just fintech, but the totality of economic diversification um, opportunities that are available for the government of Bermuda. Because as I said, at the end of the day, the objective of the government is to increase the amount of jobs and to also reduce the cost of living in Bermuda. And we believe that whether it's fintech or other forms of economic diversification is beneficial to that end. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Go. Thank you.